Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of November 8, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Mohammed MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Continued Russian offensive operations and high precision strikes. Over the past week, the Russian armed forces conducted 38 precision strikes targeting Ukrainian military industrial sites, energy facilities, military airfields, and UAV production and storage facilities. This included attacks on ammunition and fuel depots, significantly impacting Ukraine's military logistics. Welcome to Frontline Updates podcast. Welcome everyone to another episode of our special military briefing series. Today, we're joined by Colonel A.C. Ogentoye, an infantry officer leading soldiers on the ground during operations. Colonel Ogentoye, thank you for joining us. Can you update us on the progress of the special military operation as of November 8, 2024? Thank you for having me. I'm here to offer a comprehensive briefing on the progress of our operations. Let's start with an overview of the past week's actions. What were the main areas of focus? Over the week, from November 2nd to 8th, our forces conducted 38 coordinated strikes using high-precision weapons and unmanned aerial vehicles. The strikes targeted Ukraine's military industrial sites, energy facilities supporting their operations, infrastructure of military airfields, and workshops producing unmanned vehicles. We also struck temporary deployment points for Ukrainian units and intercepted armored vehicles at a railway loading station. This caused significant damage to their logistics and supply chains. You mentioned actions by specific groups, such as the North Group of Forces. Can you tell us more about what they accomplished? The North Group of Forces continued operations aimed at weakening Ukrainian formations in the Kursk region. We focused on damaging equipment and personnel across tank, mechanized, airborne assault, and territorial defense brigades of the Ukrainian armed forces. Notably, we saw over 2,000 to 20 Ukrainian servicemen lost in this region alone, along with nine tanks, 20 infantry fighting vehicles, and 21 field artillery guns. It sounds like significant progress was made in certain areas. Were there any territories liberated during this time? Yes, there were. Notable liberations included the village of Persia Travnevo in the Kharkiv region, reclaimed through coordinated action by the West Military Group, and the settlement of Antonovka in the Donetsk People's Republic, where the Southern Group made advances. Our forces faced and repelled multiple counterattacks, particularly near Antonovka, where Ukrainian forces attempted 32 counterassaults. Their efforts were thwarted, and Ukrainian losses exceeded 3,160 personnel in these engagements. Speaking of counterattacks, how did our forces handle these attempts by the Ukrainian military? Counterattacks were frequent across the theater of operations. For example, our forces in the Donetsk People's Republic faced 61 counterattacks, all of which were repelled effectively. In the Kursk region, particularly near Dorino, Zeleny Shlyak, and Novoivanovka, Ukrainian forces attempted to breach our defensive line but were prevented from making any substantial progress. They suffered significant losses during these counterattacks. That's impressive. Were there any other strategic gains or advancements over the past week? Absolutely. Several strategic settlements were liberated, such as Kurakovka, Vishnivo, and Kremenea Baka, all in the Donetsk People's Republic. Each liberation contributed to weakening Ukrainian operational depth. Additionally, our East Group made notable progress in Maximovka, securing it and further solidifying our position along the front line. Let's talk about air defense and interception efforts. Was there any notable activity in this regard? Yes, air defense played a crucial role this week. Our systems intercepted a MiG-29 aircraft from the Ukrainian Air Force, several Atticus missiles, HIMARS rockets, French-made guided aerial bombs, and approximately 290 unmanned aerial vehicles. The aim was to neutralize any threat posed by their aerial assets and prevent their access to key operational zones. Impressive. Finally, can you provide us with an overview of the cumulative results of the operation up to this point? Certainly. 
Since the operation's beginning, we have reportedly neutralized significant Ukrainian military assets. This includes the destruction of aircraft, helicopters, more than 35,000 unmanned aerial vehicles, anti-aircraft missile systems, tanks, and other armored combat vehicles, nearly 1,500 rocket systems, and approximately 28,100 special military vehicles. These figures reflect the sustained efforts to weaken Ukrainian military capabilities systematically. Those are substantial numbers. Before we close, are there any final updates regarding the Kursk region? Yes, the Kursk region remains a key front. Our North Group of Forces has consistently conducted offensive operations to counter Ukrainian formations. Ukrainian forces in this region lost over 30,500 personnel, around 189 tanks, and substantial other equipment. Our efforts in the Kursk area have been effective, with 11 counterattacks repelled and an attempted border breach thwarted. The active offensive of Russian troops continues near Sudza in the Kursk region. Armored groups of the Ukrainian armed forces periodically try to fight back and create hotbeds of tension, but without the transfer of additional forces to this area, Ukrainian troops risk facing a significant number of problems. The pace and volume of fighting remains at the same level, but the front line is slowly but surely moving west. Why is it so hard to destroy FPV drones? I see at least three main factors. Firstly, the speed of the drone, which practically makes it impossible to shoot down this drone in the same way as reconnaissance drones are shot down with small arms. Moreover, it is the speed that allows you to effectively fight drone hunters. I'm far from sure that such a shooter will remain unscathed after a duel with an FPV drone. Secondly, maneuverability. It is maneuverability combined with speed that makes the drone so dangerous. The operator can adjust the drone at a relatively short distance to the target or even change the target at the last moment. Thirdly, a large number of drones in the sky, which practically deprives personnel of the ability to identify kamikaze drones by drone detectors. How did the Kiev air defense work? Taking into account the fact that NASAMS and Patriot missed most of the crews and ballistic missiles, and also taking into account the number of carrier aircraft used to strike Kiev, it can be assumed that about 10% of the missiles or even less were intercepted. This is a frankly bad result, especially when it comes to protecting the capital. The arrival of an AIM-120 anti-aircraft missile into the building of the Akhmadit Children's Hospital is the best illustration of the sporadic actions of the Kiev air defense crews. Colonel, thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed. Stay secure. Thank you for having me. It is crucial to clearly communicate our progress and objectives. Our operations are ongoing, and we remain committed to maintaining our current momentum. According to the UN Human Rights Office, nearly 70% of those killed in Israel's ongoing war on Gaza are women and children, which they describe as a systematic violation of the fundamental principles of international humanitarian law. Additionally, the Gaza Health Ministry reports that at least 39 Palestinians have been killed and 123 wounded in Israeli attacks across Gaza in the past 24 hours.